Okay. Now, when we first started off, we established that um, man is um, born wrong. We have a, a kind of a birth defect. Uh, we, our spirit is dead. We are not connected to God. And then through um, our uh, belief in Jesus Christ as our Savior, uh, we are born again and we get connected. And our, it's, uh, our spirit now is connected to God. And the Spirit of God lives inside us. Uh, and we're born again. So uh, basically it's, it's, uh, it's like you're a baby Christian. And uh, if I was going to try to make this, put this in perspective so someone can really understand it, is let's compare someone that just got born again today to someone who was just born today physically, a little baby, okay? When they're a, a baby, uh, if they ever want to expect to get from infant to mature adult, productive mature adult, a lot of things have to happen, right? For example, they have to uh, drink milk. They, yeah, they need some f- good food. Yeah. Um, they need to uh, physically. Uh, they need to get some good exercise yes. if they really want to get strong. Right. They need a good education. Right. They need to study and get educated. Uh, food. Food. Yeah. So all these things that uh, the infant needs to grow into a mature, Physically. productive adult. Um, good food, good exercise, good education. Uh, um, these things are also needed for someone who's born again spiritually to grow and mature spiritually into a mature, productive Christian. So we're going to talk about the things uh, that are the kind of the spiritual food and exercise and study that is needed. Uh, let's start off with... Uh, Romans 12, 2? Yeah. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be transformed through the Holy Spirit, right? Right. Be transformed. So, uh, we are first transformed into a child of God, and then the Holy Spirit living inside us continues this process. We call it sanctification. That sanctification is a process where we grow in spiritual maturity. Becoming more like Christ. Yes. That should be our goal. Um, Now, that's a lifelong process. Does every person physically uh, grow and mature at the same rate and to the same degree? No. No. Some people really are like they're geniuses and they're really smart and they they really get all kinds of educations and accomplishments and stuff and uh, and, and other people uh, they never reach those levels and they do it at a slower rate it's the same thing with our spiritual growth and we have to understand that not every Christian is is able and uh, uh, or or has their even the the right attitude to uh, to work at growing spiritually but there are certain things you can do. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, Matthew. Matthew 6, 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. That's Jesus talking, right? Yep. And uh, what we're talking about right now is prayer. This is one of the things that we need to do to grow and mature spiritually. We need a lot of prayer. Talk to God. Yes. That's what prayer is. A conversation with God. But Jesus is talking there about people praying the wrong way. He calls it vain repetitions. Can you think of... Uh, anything that you see commonly today that would be vain, repetitious prayers? I think like the rosary. Uh, yes, Roman Catholics have a rosary. It's a series of beads. And they work through those beads and say memorized prayers. And to me, that's exactly what Jesus is denouncing. Saying, don't say these vain repetitions. Um, you know, if you really want to get a close relationship with Jesus, you need to have a conversation with Him. Um, let me ask you, 
what if you uh, uh, only talk to your to your wife and say you know uh, uh, once a week? Um, the relationship's not going to be. Or let's say you even talk to her less, even twice a year. Maybe every Christmas and Easter you decided you talk to her. You're not going to know her. <laughs> what kind of relationship would it be? Uh, and what what if you uh, when you talk to her? You had to wrote down a paragraph and you memorized it, and or you read it, and every time you did talk to her, you memorized and read that same thing over her. <laughs> what would she think of that? She would think you're out of your mind. She would think you, yeah, you're out of your mind. And hey, Frank, that's not a conversation. You're just memorizing it something. It means nothing. Um, so look at our relationship with Jesus in that same way you know we want to have a real conversation and we want to do it frequently not just on rare occasions on a, every Sunday or every uh, uh, you know every holiday let's let's go to the next verse do you have that Romans 12 12 yeah rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continuing Instant in prayer. That's the Apostle Paul telling us how to uh, how to pray. That he says, continue instant in prayer. So in other words, when I'm not focused and talking to you, and and when I'm not focused on something, then I should be in prayer with God. Exactly. Prayer, you should be can uh, can have a continuous conversation with Jesus. It's interrupted now because. I'm talking and you're listening, so you're not in prayer. But as soon, as soon as your mind is freed from this and it's free to go to Jesus, it should instantly continue in prayer and conversation with Jesus. That's the ideal. That's what Paul is saying is the ideal way for us to pray. Pray and imagine what our relationship with Jesus would be like if we were continually talking to Him all the time, unless our mind was required somewhere else. I, you know, the other night I was talking to the Lord and, and I was just talking to Him and He was counseling me. Um, but man, I didn't want to really do what He was saying. I was like... Yeah, sometimes He gives us some hard instructions. Could you find Colossians 4.2? Two, two? Colossians 4.2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So continuously pray. Uh, so prayer is the first thing that we need to do. We need to establish a good prayer life to uh, build that close relationship with Jesus.